followed suit, which was really, really, really good. So um, it's not for anything, but just to be good citizens, to be honest. And not only to be good citizens, but to be good human beings. You know, um, it's, it's unfortunate. It's really, really unfortunate. But um, we, the black people, not, not all of us actually, not all of us, there are some that are doing, but majority of us, uh, don't care about the environment because the notion they have is if I do my bits and uh, lots of other people out there don't do anything, my bit does not have any impact. That's not correct. That's not correct. Do your bit. Try to, you know, pass the word around. I mean, if they listen to you, fine. If they don't listen to you, you've still done your job. You know, because um, um, we can have money, we can have everything. But where we live is our environment. If our environment is bad, naturally we will be bad. Because it will start with what? We all need oxygen to breathe. We all need good air to breathe in. So if the air we breathe in is polluted, easily we can all catch diseases. Okay? And if your environment is not clean, naturally the air you breathe in will be polluted. Is that not the case? All right. All right, good. So, so thank you all for those who have participated. Uh, those who have not participated, uh, to be honest, it's not late. You can do it. Maybe some will have chance from now against uh, the weekend. You know, let us inspire each other. You know, let us inspire each other. I, you know, I've shown you my bit. Uh, to be honest, um, what I love is farming. You know, I love farming. To be honest, I love to do justice to my environment. That's why after my work, you know, at my free time, I don't go to Vus or, 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 or Grand Plazas or whatever. I go to my garden. I have my garden in Mandua. I have goat, I have sheep, I have my poultry, I have my, my, my trees, um, uh, fruit trees, mangoes, oranges, and so on and so forth. Okay, maybe at this age you might not be able to do all that. But if you plan it now, you know, if you plan it now, you know, by the time, you know, um, you, uh, you know, by the time you grow, by the time you become older, you'll have it as part of your plants, you know, and, and it's, 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 it's really, really helpful. Um, because if you plant a tree, if that tree grows, um, if anybody benefits from that tree, being it is fruits, its leaves, its roots, its bark, you know, its shade, anything, human beings, animals, birds, if anyone benefits from it, even after your death, you get that benefit. That's what in Islam we call what sadaqa to zariya. It's, it's a sadaqa that stay to you even after your death. Okay, so it's really, really important that uh, we do this thing. Okay, some of you might not have, say, uh, spaces where you can plant these things and so on and so on. But one thing I know is all of us have our villages, maybe except the, the Banjulians and so on and so forth. But um, almost all of us have our villages. So we could do something. The rainy season is coming. You know, do your, do your bits. And even if you live in Talindi or, or, or in, in Latikona or in anywhere that is a bit congested, even if it is a compound where, I mean, it's for renting, if there is a space to plant something, plant it. Even if it is going to be a banana, plant it. It doesn't matter whether you get benefits from it. Maybe by the time you, know, you, you reap the benefits, maybe you'll have moved to another company. I'm, I'm talking about those who may be renting. But do that. Even after you left, you know, um, the people who will be coming to that compound, even if they benefit from the shade, wherever you are, dead or alive, you will benefit from the, from the, from the blessings. Okay, so I was really impressed that um, most of you are doing your, you know, bits and pieces. You know, um, some have got their little gardens in their backyard, some have got, um, 
you know, uh, one or two bananas, banana trees, you know, so it's, it's, it's really good. There is one that I challenged. Uh, the, she showed me uh, an apple tree. So I was asking her whether she actually grow that apple, but she didn't respond to me. Because as far as I know, uh, in the Gambia, we don't grow apples. I, I stand to be corrected. I, I, I don't know. Has anyone seen any apple tree growing in this country here? Apple? Apple tree? Anyone? No, sir. Okay. I have not seen that as well. But anyway, it was, um, it was a good initiative. So like I said, um, let's keep pushing. You know, let us not stop there, but let's pass the word around. You know, that, um, I mean, even if it's going to be, I mean, an advice on how to keep your environment clean, it's all, it's all part of it. You know, if you can do a bit of farming, you know, if you can save water, you know, um, like uh, Christiana told me in, uh, in, in her own submission that at the house, they took turns to, uh, I mean, ensure that um, the, the bags they use for their shopping, even these plastic bags, they wash them clean and then make sure they reuse them over and over. They ensure that um, during the day, all lights are turned off. You know, they ensure that there are no water leakages and so on. All these are really, really important. So we'll come to, we'll come to see um, uh, when we start our slides, how important it is to uh, make sure um, uh, you preserve energy because energy is always inadequate anywhere in the world. So if we waste it, um, we're not doing justice to ourselves and we're not doing justice to, to others. Okay. So overall, how do you see the environment? How do you see the assignment on the environment before we move to our slides today? Lamin, I didn't, I didn't see anything from, I didn't, I didn't see anything from you. Lamin Jawara. Are you from Kerala? You didn't see me, or you didn't, you didn't show us your farm from Kerala. Are you from Kerala? No, I'm not from Kerala. I'm from Nyani Barajali. Nyani Barajali, yes. Nyani Barajali, yes. You didn't, you didn't, I, I didn't see anything from you. You want to tell me that you are not involved in farming? I've seen it, I've seen it. Oh, did you? Okay. The last ones I, I didn't have sent, see. I've sent mine. Oh, you've sent yours. Okay. No, okay. I sent it since. Since around 12, yeah. And around if 12. you go through around 12, you'll see it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cartoon, 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 did I see anything from you? Cartoon today? Oh, it's not with us. Okay. I have received from Bintu with the with the, um, how to call it, um, amalgamation from, um, from charcoal or firewood to gas. I hope you use it continuously, Bindu. Uh -huh. and, and the gas, the gas bottle, I hope it's outside because it's not safe yes, to it's inside. <laughs> I will. Okay, okay. Yes, she said, it she is, said, it is, it is she said, did you submit anything? I, I hope I've seen anything from you. I can't remember. No, Mr. Ford, I didn't submit it because ah, okay. I was sick. That's why I wasn't able to do it work. Okay, but like I said, you still have up to, up to Monday. You know, let's, let's submit it. You know, it's, it's really, really, I mean, it's, it, it's entice a lot of people and even me, I learned, you know, some, some new stuff, uh, especially uh, the one Mari, Mari Mane sent. You know, there was, uh, she didn't want to send the video uh, to, the, to, the, uh, to the main phone, but she sent it to me and I snapped part of it and sent it to, to the, you know, somebody was trying to make uh, a dress from a used plastic bag. It, it, it was really good. So, you know, um, you know, people could improve on it. You know, and then you know, try to even if if it's not a dress, but um, like um, this um, uh, sort of hat that women you know put on, you know, especially when they are doing the the makeup and their hair and so on. So we could use it for those, you know. So there are lots of um, lots of uses for 
for I mean recycled materials. You know. So anybody, any contribution? Any uh, anybody wants to say anything before we move? Amadou, Amadou Serikan, your, your, project, your project looks good. Is Amadou with us? Mari? Mari, Mari you, didn't, you didn't show us your farm, your farm in Kudang, eh? You didn't show us your farm. Hello, Mari. Is Mari with us? Mari, Mari is not with us. Okay. So, okay. I think we can we can proceed. Yeah, we can proceed. Yeah. Class, Roger on that. I'm sorry, I'm with you. Oh, okay, Mari. All right, okay. Yes, I'm still in the office. That's why and I'm doing some work at the same time, concentrate. Are oh, you doing some work at the same time? Tell them to give you time. This is time for study. Let them give you time. Yeah, we, we really handicapped this 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 past month. Three of our staff delivered, so it's just bad. I know, I know. I will send my I'll I'll oh, okay. send my oh, yeah. okay. Okay. No problem. Okay. No problem. Fine. Thank you. Okay, so I think we can start. Uh, we can start. Right. Just connect that. Right. Okay, so as usual, we will start this lectures also with a, with a little video uh on environmental management accounting okay let's watch the video i think it's about six seven minutes hello in this video we will be consuming just one second Considering environmental management accounting. Hello. In this video, we will be considering environmental management accounting. We will start off by considering why traditional management accounting techniques are inadequate for highlighting environmental impact and controlling environmental cost. We'll then go on to have a look and therefore management of environmental costs. There are various different types of environmental costs. Let's consider how the conventional treatment leads to them being ignored or otherwise mismanaged. Firstly, conventional costs. For example, heating and other energy costs and water consumption. Often these costs aren't highlighted in the traditional accounting system. They're considered to be part of general overheads. And because of this, they're not highlighted in management reporting and so management get no visibility of the size of these costs or any incentive to manage them specifically. Then there's contingent costs, for example, potential future compliance costs or the decommissioning costs to eliminate the environmental impact of the closure of a site. These often occur in the future and as such are not considered by management who may have a myopic view. There's also relationship costs, the production of environmental information to communicate our environmental impact and management to stakeholders costs money. These costs are usually invisible to managers as environmental information production 
is considered as part of general information production. And finally, reputational costs. For example, lost sales as a result of bad publicity following from environmental damage. Lost sales are not recorded in traditional accounts. They are simply sales that did not occur. Again, because management have no visibility of these, they are unaware of their impact or indeed their existence. Environmental management accounting seeks to give discrete visibility to some of these costs. This highlights their existence and their size. Targets can then be created to focus attention on them and to reduce their size. Let us now consider some of the different environmental management accounting techniques there are to assist in this process. Activity-based costing can be used. For example, cleaning up waste water before it's pumped out into a river will generally be treated as a factory overhead. However, if the cost of cleaning it up can be related specifically to the products that drive that pollution in the first place, then polluting products will be relatively more expensive and so less attractive to produce. However, like all applications of activity-based costing, additional information is required which takes time and money to gather. Input-output analysis follows the principle of what goes in must come out. The physical quantity of raw materials and other inputs is measured. Then the physical quantity of outputs is measured, for example including finished goods, waste and packaging. Inevitably, the weight of outputs will be less than the weight of inputs. The strategic management accountant must try and close the gap between the two, in other words, try to explain where all the inputs have gone. The assumption must logically be that any unexplained gap is likely to imply an environmental impact, pollution of some sort. Work focuses on identifying the size of the gap between inputs and outputs and reducing any identified environmental impact. Flow cost accounting is similar in principle to input-output analysis and seeks to measure and minimise the amount cost and the impact of packaging. Life cycle costing is also relevant here. Traditionally, environmental impact is associated with the production phases, growth and maturity. However, much of the environmental impact is due to decisions made at the development and introductory phases. In addition, decommissioning often has a significant environmental impact at the end of the product life cycle. Using life cycle costing should ensure that environmental impacts over the life of a product are considered and accounted for. One key piece of information that the strategic management accountant can produce to help identify environmental costs is to adapt the cost of quality report headings for use in an environmental sense. Prevention costs is money, time and effort expended to ensure that environmental impact is minimised. For example, designing a production process that minimises the use of energy and water. Appraisal costs include, for example, the money, time and effort required to test environmental impact. For example, testing samples of waste water or carbon-based emissions to ensure they are within the legal limits and within the company policy limits. Internal failure costs may occur if upon appraisal environmental impact is discovered but is contained within the business. For example, suppose an environmental analyst tests waste water before it's pumped out into a local river and finds it's polluted. Work will need to be done to remedy this before discharging the waste. This could also interrupt the production processes of the organisation. External failure costs may occur if an undetected environmental impact reaches the outside world. For example, suppose excessively polluted water is in fact flushed out into the river, killing the fish and other local wildlife. Apart from the moral implications of this, this will be damaging to the company's reputation and may well impact on them commercially as a result of the story being made public. Customers may decide to boycott buying the product. In principle, the way to approach environmental costs is similar to quality costs. 
by spending more and spending wisely on prevention, appraisal costs can be lower and the internal and external failure costs should reduce. In summary, several techniques exist to highlight environmental impact and associated costs. Not only will this help an organization's corporate social responsibility credentials, it can also help manage costs in a more efficient and effective manner. This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the... Okay, so, how was the video? I hope it was loud and clear. Yes, it is. Yes, yes it, it is. is. Yeah, Mr. Fukuna, it was clear. Okay, exactly. So, in summary, what did we learn in the video? We're going to um, do more of it, but let's just um, summarize our understanding of uh, what the video is trying to articulate. Um, Mr. Bovina? Yes, Fatu? Yeah, we've learned about the types of environmental costs. Okay, the video told us about some types of environmental costs. Can you just uh, highlight one of them? Yeah, that is the conventional cost. Conventional cost, okay, yeah. that's right. Okay, so anyone, anyone else? Mr. Bovina? Yes. Yeah, I, where I'm interested is the adopted cost, the adopt cost there, where you have the, uh, the external failure. The external failure cost, exactly. Yeah, the external failure cost, it have, it, something like that have to relate to Gunjur there. Why do you go up to Gunjur? You have somewhere nearer. I actually, I don't know where you meet, Mr. Jaito. But, yeah, but uh, because, uh, because this, I don't know, these Chinese people, that they are polluting the, the water and the surrounding that area. Yes. But the problem is, those people, they are products. It's not in Gambia here. I think it is not displayed in Gambia. If it hadn't been, it is displayed in Gambia here. People can boycott the buying that product in general. But Yes, yes. They don't, they don't produce for us, actually. They produce for a, a different market. You're right, you're right, you're right. Exactly what you have said, external failure cost. Mm -hmm is one of the best examples you can give in the Gambia. Yeah, but unfortunately, I don't know what the government is doing about it, but uh, they're polluting, you know, um, the waters uh, in Gujur, um, and, and, and not only Gujur, but it goes everywhere, you know, and uh, the authorities are aware of it, but I, I don't know, to be honest, I don't know. But that's, that's a typical example of it, okay? So anyone else? Hello, Mr. Fofana. Yes, ma'am. Yes, we have the video has also told us like some of the techniques we have used, like the uh, ABC and the life cycle costing to trace the cost of the environment. Exactly, the ABC and the life cycle cost, life cycle costing. Exactly, you know these are costing techniques that are really really important, and you can apply them. You know, um, anyway, especially with the with the activity based costing, you can you can definitely use, um, you know, you know some of these costing techniques you can you know, uh, intermingle them to, to, to solve a particular problem. Okay, yeah, that's a good one. Okay, anyone else? Okay, go back to our slide. Okay, so uh, we'll go back to our slides. Um, just to summarize what the video is um, saying is exactly what we're coming to do. So it started by uh, defining what is uh, EMA, what's environmental management accounting, you know, what are the various types of um, environmental costs? Uh, why necessary to um, introduce environmental costing in the first place, okay? Um, I came with a, with a particular case just Wednesday in the Gambia here. You know, we, we're going to look at it um, on the papers on standard newspaper, I don't know who has read it, there was a particular institution in the Gambia who was fined $3.5 million 
for not being good to the environment. Has, one, has anyone read it on the papers? I saw the head in Mr. Fofana. Okay. I think it's Nawek. Nawek. Excellent. Nawek. Fined by Pura. Nawek had been fined by Pura 3.5 million. And that's 3.5 million was as at that date. Because as we are talking, if they have not remedied the environment, if they have not uh, remedied the effects of those environments, they're charging them on a daily basis 25,000 on each of the sites. Okay, we'll, we'll look at it broadly. So we as management, we as accountants, do we care about our environment? Do we? Should we be interested? Should we? Should there be any environmental management accounting in the first place? Should there be any? Yes. It's important. It's very, 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 very important. A typical example is with Nawek. Um, first, it's going to affect the whole of Nawek, but more so it's going to affect the accountants more because um, I am 100% sure they never budgeted this. But then they must pay because Pura is very, very, very powerful. They are the uh, 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 authority that is responsible for regulating all these utility, you know, uh, uh, organizations, you know, um, the, 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 those in, the, in telecommunication, those in provision of um, services like uh, electricity, water, and so on and so forth. I hope we, we all know the role of Pura, yeah? Yeah. We all know about Pura, yeah? Okay. So we will look at the case, don't worry, but it's just to tell you that it is really, really important to take care of your environment, especially as accountant. Okay? Um, so let's look at it one by one. But first, what is environmental accounting? Okay? Environmental accounting, of course, just like the terminology accounting itself, is a broader term that encompasses, of course, the provision of environmental environment related information to both external and internal users so environmental accounting in a nutshell is the provision of information relating to the business environment for both the internal and external users okay really really important so as such if you embark on environmental accounting you should be able to um, provide information relating to the environment to management and even to shareholders, okay? To management in the form of management accounting. That's why we have environmental management accounting. But manage, uh, environmental accounting in general would include, of course, environmental, uh, 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 how to call it, uh, financial accounting. Okay, environmental financial accounting will include um, making disclosures in the financial statements relating to environmental costs and environmental benefits. A typical example will be with the case of NAWEC now. In their financial statements in 2020, NAWEC must disclose this particular cost because it's becoming mandatory. Okay, they have to disclose it so that it can come clear that this are the costs that were related to the environment, of course, as a result of NAWEC not, take care of, not taking care of their environment, and uh, if they have any benefit at all, they, I doubt they don't have any benefit, okay? So if they don't, auditors must ensure that these particular costs are highlighted. That is by disclosing them in the notes to accounts, okay? Do we know this? So, Environmental management accounting, of course, is a subset or is a part of management accounting that focuses entirely on the provision of information for internal decision making. Okay? Is it clear? Do we understand what man environmental management accounting is all about? Just like your management account. You know, management accounting is about provision of 
useful, timely information for decision making. I think we all know this, isn't it? Are we together? Yes, sir. We do. Okay. So, the end of environmental management accounting is the same, but this time around, the focus is on the environment, the business environment. Okay. So, and, yeah, go ahead. Is it is it is it um, uh, uh, okay to say uh, kind of co social corporate responsibility that the business or the farm should have to look into and preserve it while operating on that particular location? Yes, actually, um, CSR, corporate social responsibility of every business, of course, has to do with uh, the environment. So in a sense, your CSR is part of your environmental management account because the CSR does not only deal with the business environment uh, uh, ensuring that sewage is not disposed, ensuring that there are no pollution, but also how the organization is able to take care of its environment. For example, the people around the, the business, are they contributing to their, to their development? For example, are they providing scholarships? Are they providing uh, 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 money for people, for healthcare, you know, and so on and so forth? So in a sense, CSR, of course, is part of uh, uh, the business um, environmental, you know, management accounting, okay? Okay, so um, environmental management accounting uses some standard accounting techniques. Okay, like we have seen uh, some target costing, uh, activity-based costing, life cycle costing, okay? Uh, so it uses some standard accounting techniques to identify, analyze, manage, and hopefully reduce environmental costs in a way that provides mutual benefit to the company and the environment, although sometimes it is possible uh, with one party, either the environment or the business, okay? So, Environmental management accounting is very, very, very important. It uses accounting techniques to ensure that environmental costs are identified. If they are identified, we analyze them. We try to manage them, okay? And of course, we try to uh, reduce their effects, okay? So this is really important because if we don't, what's going to happen is it's going to cost the business a lot. Okay, so for example, activity-based costing may be used to ascertain more accurately the cost of washing a towel in a gym. Okay, we, we all know what a gym is, isn't it? We all know what a gym is. Uh, some, of, some of you, not, not only the, 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 the men, but the ladies are now frequent goers of, of the gym, isn't it? Okay. Are we together? Okay. Yes, Mr. Popper. Yes. Are we together? Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Okay, so um, I was talking about I was talking about the gym. So this particular example of um, environmental management accounting uses activity-based costing yeah. in a situation whereby uh, someone operates a gym. Okay, we all know what a gym is. Um, in the Gambia, obviously, gyms they they kind of um, pass, they, they they operate partially. Okay, what I mean by partial operation is um, in the West most gyms have got additional facilities. You understand? For example, some gyms, gyms will have uh, spas, uh, some will have uh, what you call uh, the saunas, you know, and stuff. So those are extra facilities, you know, that users want to enjoy from like um, after doing your, uh, your exercise and stuff. Uh, there are certain rooms that you can go to um, you kind of heat yourself up, you know, um, 
I think it's, it's available here, I understand, I think around Senegal Mill. So whereby when you go in there, it's like a bakery, you know, you, 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 you sweat profusely, okay? But what that does, it, it cleans your, your airways, you know, and it kind of gives you um, a very good, um, a very good, um, you know, reflection and, you know, your, your airways, you know, are all kind of um, clean. Okay, so this particular example is looking at a situation whereby um, a gym operator uh, allows people uh, to... What's uh, make class now? I'll call you after. Make class after, I'll call you. Sorry about this, let me switch my phone off. Hello class, are, are you with me? Hello? Yes, we are here, we are here. Okay, sorry, sorry, I have a call, but my, my phone is picked up now, okay, fine. Okay, so what I was trying to explain is um, um, an example of an activity-based costing you know, in uh, environmental management accounting. Okay, so uh, this is a situation whereby um, a gym operates not only facility for exercising, but it's like there are usually other places, like I was explaining, there might be some uh, place called sauna, there might be some places called uh, spas, you know, and so on and so forth. So there are different facilities. Then on top of that, there will be some areas that will be designated for people who would like to have very nice showers or who would like to have bath, you know, and, and stuff like that. Okay, so, um, so it's like the way they do it, you come for a package, let's say monthly you're gonna pay X dollars or X pound style, okay? So that will include, that package will include uh, when you come um, to have a shower because all those things are costed, when you are taking sour, um, you can use, as part of that package, you can use only one towel. And so all these things are costed. Okay, so um, what EMA can do using activity-based costing is trying, it, it will try to analyze those costs, okay, in a situation of a gym, okay, and then um, try to segregate the energy cost. You know, when you are um, when you are operating a gym, you need a lot of electricity to operate um, machines. Oh my God! Sorry, let me take this. I'm in the office. One second, I'll take this. Sorry, I'm getting some interruption from the office. Okay, right. Okay, let me continue. So, so what I was saying is, um, in this particular case, the activity-based costing could be used to analyze um, the energy cost. Okay, um, in a situation whereby the towels have to be washed using a washing machine. You know, we all know a washing machine that is used to wash clothing. Okay, so uh, if you have to use um, activity-based costing to analyze energy cost uh, in a situation of washing machine, what will be the what will be the activity level? What will be the best activity level to apportion the cost of energy into various users? What will be the best activity level? Hello? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, I, I hope it's over now. They're calling me from the reception. Okay, so um, what will be the activity level? We're trying to oppose on energy cost. So this is energy of power 
that is used to operate washing machines. Okay, so what will be the cost driver? Could it be uh, the electricity cost? Could it be the electricity Yes. Sometimes the machine has been used. Sorry, you are breaking. You are breaking. You say it, it could be what? Mr. Pokala. Yeah. Um, the cost driver of um the cost driver is washing that. Is what? Hello? Washing. Yes. Washing. The number of washing. We know, we know, we know what a, we, we know what what a washing machine is. Yeah, I, I'm sure some of you have have used it before. A washing machine. Um, I think it will be the number of clothes. Um, Basim, no, it will be the number of clothes. The reason is, if you are used to a washing machine, a uh, washing machine has a capacity Hello? that means it can take. It can take a number of clothes at the same time. But if, if let's say, it can take 25 clothes at one go, if you put 25 clothes there or you put one clothes there, it's going to be the same energy. Because washing machine operates based on the, the, the number of washing. For example, if you program it to wash for 30 minutes, it's going to work exact, it's going to wash exactly for 30 minutes. Whether there is one cloth there or whether there are 25 pieces of clothes there. So hello, Mr. Fokana. Yes. Yeah, I think it's the kilowatt per hour. The kilowatt per hour. Okay. Uh, you know that's gonna be difficult to, to, to measure because the washing machine won't have its own meter, probably. <laughs> You understand? So that that is that is correct, but it's not practical to be honest. Because it's like you cannot have you cannot have I mean uh, uh, only washing machine dedicated to a particular meter. Then if it's like the meter is dedicated to the washing machine, then you can easily do that. But that's not practical. Okay. Anyone else? Hello, Mr. Kupana. Yes, honey. We will go by your answer, honey. We'll go by your answer. Yes, you've said it rightly. Yes, it's uh, the I think number of. I stand. It's the number of clothes yes. washed. Well, not the number of clothes washed. No, it's the number of washing. The number of uh, washes that you do. Like, for example, if you do one run uh, that lasts for one hour or that lasts for thirty minutes. Let's say. Uh, because these are clothes that don't stain that much, okay, that don't stain that much, um, you can wash for 30 minutes. So it will be the number of washes that you have done, the number of 30 minutes you have done. I, I don't know uh, whether any of you is familiar with, uh, okay. with the washes. So that's the way it operates. Okay? So, uh, right, we use activity-based costing, and our cost driver will be the number of washing okay so um what's going to happen is once these costs have been identified and accumulated okay uh it might be analyzed to and to uh, it might be analyzed to customers okay so that they are aware that if you come you use more than one towel you're going to be charged for it Okay, so because it's something that deals with the preservation of energy, most customers will comply. Okay, because we know if we wash with a washing machine, okay, um, we're going to use energy, and energy is not environmentally friendly. So, because of that reason, um, most customers are going to comply, and then they will either restrict themselves to the use of a single towel or they will be ready to pay for an extra term. Okay, so this is one way of um, uh, analyzing environmental cost 
so that it can be uh, it can be useful in decision making. Okay. Right. So the game could um, you know ask uh, customers to pay for the second one if they need one. You know, and you know, of course, like I said, um, considering the approach is considered environmentally friendly, they'll be more than ready to, to pay for it, okay? I'm talking about people who are seriously conscious about the environment. I'll tell you, there are people in the West especially who don't buy products of organizations or companies that are not environmentally friendly. For example, if there is a, if there is a bad uh, publicity against a particular environment. For example, there is uh, oil spillage by that particular organization and so on, and it's everywhere in the media. A lot of people will boycott their product. By boycotting their product, product you know, that can, of course, send them to the guillotine. Okay? And uh, that will also send a signal to them that they must behave when it comes to, they must behave well when it comes to their environment. Okay, so it's really, really important to uh, take care of your environment. Okay, so we continue with some definitions. Uh, the International Federation of Accountants, you know, you know about the, the IFAC. The IFAC is the, the apex body of accountants. You know, they have their office in, uh, in New York. This is the way they define EMA. Uh, management of environmental and economic performance through the development and implementation of appropriate environmental and sorry, appropriate environment-related accounting systems and practices. While this may include reporting and auditing in some companies, environmental management accounting typically involves life cycle costing, full cost accounting, benefits assessment, and strategic planning for environmental management. That's the definition IFAC has given to EMA. So we have another one for the UNCD. This tells you that EMA is very, 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 very important. So the UNDCS broadly defined EMA to be identification, collection, analysis, and use of two types of information for internal decision making. One is physical information on the use, flows, and destines of energy, water and materials, including waste, and then two, monetary information on environmental related costs earnings and savings, okay? You know, environmental, um, um, it's not only the cost that is associated with it, but then by managing your environment, properly organizations can, you know, earn revenues out of them. We'll come to see when we do carbon trading, okay? So let's move. So categories of environmental costs. We're going to look at categories of environmental costs. Then we will look at the case with uh, NAWEC that was just on the media. So the first one is environmental prevention cost. Okay, they say prevention is better than, prevention is better than? Yeah, yeah, yeah. what's wrong with your mic? Okay, they say prevention is better than kill. So any cost associated with trying to prevent environmental costs like waste, you know, are all categorized under this uh, broad category called prevention cost. Example, a food manufacturing company acquiring highly technological production machines and also training operators, uh, because if you acquire um, a machine that is highly technological, that is uh, state of art, it will ensure that there are less waste. Okay, and we all know waste is an environmental cost. So acquiring machinery to prevent waste is an environmental prevention cost. The second category is environmental detection cost. Okay. Uh, is cost in court to ensure that the organization complies with regulations and voluntary standards, okay? Uh, this is a situation whereby NAWEC could, um, uh, of course, um, invest in solar system for generating electricity for the Gambia. Of course, it will reduce what? 
carbon emissions. Those who live around Kotu Power Station will testify to this. It's very, very, very difficult living around that area. The amount of smoke, the amount of carbon that gets into the air in around these places is just too much. Do we have anyone living around this area? Around Kotu Power Station? It's terrible living around that area. Okay, so that's environmental detection cost. Okay, another environmental detection cost NOAA could have done was what they have not done until they were fined this 3.5 million. And uh, we'll come to see those. Um, among them is to ensure that um, their water preservatory centers are properly done so that there is no leakage of water that will cause, uh, uh, how to call it, uh, uh, stagnant water that can cause malaria and stuff like that. Okay, we have lots of that. And there are other things that we're going to look at in a couple of slides in front. So the third category is environmental internal failure cost. Okay, I think the video described this. What do we mean by environmental internal failure cost? And can we give any example other than that of KMC? Are we together? Environmental internal failure costs. Are you following? Hello, class. Are you following? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is the video described environmental internal failure cost. Somebody gave an example of um, environmental external failure cost. Can we give an example of environmental internal failure costs other than the example given here, the KMC acquiring beans? So environmental internal failure costs is cost incurred from performing activities that have produced contaminants and waste that have not been discharged into the environment yet. So that means the waste at home, internal failure cost. Some of you have already done it. For example, um, instead of um, using charcoal or firewood, okay, instead of using charcoal or firewood to do your cooking, you've decided to change, okay? You've decided to change. You've decided to acquire um, a cooker, gas cooker that uses gas. So that, is, that will be what? Environmental internal failure cost. Because instead of um, allowing um, pollutants to go into the atmosphere like that, you've decided to stop it. How did you stop it? By stopping your current culture, by stopping the use of firewood and uh, charcoal and uh, sifting to the use of gas cooker. Yeah? But you, because you know if you use firewood and gas cooker, it can create a lot of environmental problems. One of them will be deforestation. You know, um, another will be uh, the global warming. You know, so environmental internal failure costs, uh, costs of course, that relates to performing activities that can produce contaminants that may have not been discharged into the environment yet. Okay. 
So the last category is environmental external failure cost. Uh, JT has given a very good example of the case of um, uh, this uh, Chinese company in Gunju. Okay. So, but we have another example, which is a typical example of, um, you know, KMC, you know, trying to contact, you know, a company. Um, I think this, this was not recent, actually. This was around 2015 or so. They wanted to con contact um, a company. I think it was, uh, it was uh, an Italian company or Spanish company to, you know, um, recycle the waste in Bakote dump site. Are, are you aware of this? There was a time that um, they, wanted to, they wanted to do that, but they, they, I don't think they agreed because nothing has been done up till now. Are you aware of this? It's 16 hours. Yes, Mr. Fulton. Yeah, exactly. But I, I don't think it's our gone through because um, I passed by Bakote dump site less than two weeks ago and it, it was the same. Okay. So environmental external failure cost is um, in court on activities performed after discharging waste into the environment. For example, after all the dumping in Bakote dump site, trying to um, incur some cost that will make sure that um, there is some recycling, uh, some of the waste can be turned to, you know, um, like chemicals, to fertilizer, and so on and so forth. So those are called environmental external failure cost. Okay. So, um, any comments before we move? Any questions? Yeah, hello, Mr. Fovan. Yes, I'm a... Yes, how about, how about this one, NDMA? Can you consider them as external failure or something like that? NDMA, that's National yes. Disaster Plan, is it? Yes. Uh, how, how? Because NDMA does a couple of things. How? Just, just trying to confirm whether they have similar function with this one, KMC, something like that. Um, no, because what, ND, what, what NDMA does is um, they are responsible for rescuing people uh, who are affected as a result of natural disasters like floods, you know, um, you know, um, uh, flooding, you know. Um, I mean, due to this heavy wind, wind and uh, tsunamis and so on, we don't, we don't have any tsunamis. So they are responsible for helping out people who are affected as a result of national disaster. Um, the NEA, maybe you wanted to say NEA, National Environmental Agency. Because NEA is responsible for I mean, all these, um, you know, pollutants, you know, they, they, they're also responsible for the environment. In fact, they are the ones who are responsible for taking care of the environment. So um, if NDMA uh, wants to incur some cost regarding, I mean, discharges of chemicals and so on and so forth, after they have, yes, you can put them under environmental external costs. Okay, that's NDA, that's uh, NEA, National uh, environmental agency. Okay, is that clear, Amar? Uh, yes, yes, Mr. Hovan, I, I get it. Okay, okay. So, any other question before we go to the case we have? Okay, so can you see? You people don't read your newspapers. This was uh, on Wednesday. This was on Wednesday, 10th June. Okay, look at the heading. Pura finds Nawek 3.5 million on standard newspaper. <laughs> Most of you have not seen this, have you? Okay, so that's the story. I think it's on um, the second page. The full story is on the heading, it's on the uh the front page but the story is inside i think on page two or page three okay but i just decide to analyze the story this way okay so that um, as accountants we are interested in the environmental management accounting aspect of it 
uh, and of course, um, how it's going to affect NAWEC as a whole. So, like I was saying in my introduction, uh, this story appeared on the newspaper, the standard newspaper on the 10th June 2020, uh, regarding uh, Public Utilities Regulatory Authority, that's PURA, Public Utilities Regulatory Authority, that's PURA. PURA is an organization that is responsible for regulating all the utilities company, the likes of NAWEC, uh, the likes of um, um, Gamsel, Afusel, and so on. They are, they are the ones who are responsible for regulating them. And as such, they have right to find them if they found them wanting, okay? So if they, uh, uh, how to call it, uh, disobey the law in one way or the other, uh, Pura has got the right to find them. So this is exactly what they have done in the situation of now. So these are the, you can read the story, but these are the, the, uh, the breakdown of the fines and the offenses they have committed. Okay, so this is uh, Nawek in Farafene. According to Pura, there was what? Serious waste of water due to leaking tank. Okay, they had a tank in Farafene that was leaking like crazy. And uh, because of that, this caused economic loss to the country because water is money. So water was just leaking throughout, okay? And of course, it has caused environmental hazard and contamination because the leaking water, you know, was stagnant. You know, it has uh, caused problems. Mosquitoes breed in it, which causes, you know, malaria and other diseases, okay? So it caused what? Environmental hazard and contamination. So those three counts, they found them, they find them 500,000 plus um, a punitive charge, they call it punitive charge of 25,000 on daily basis. 500,000 plus 25,000 on daily basis. Can you imagine this? Because of negligence to the environment. So count four also, 500,000 plus 25,000 daily basis, and count four was one. Failure to remedy poor sanitary environment surrounding, surrounding the chlorine dosing point, resulting in permanent settlement of stagnant water. Okay, you know, they have some points where they will, um, you know, uh, how to call it, uh, put chlorine in the water. You know, chlorine is that chemical salt-like salt type that uh, makes sure that uh, we, don't, we don't drink raw water but instead the water is treated so that if there are any bacteria or other microbes, it can kill them, okay? So that's another count that they have fined them 500,000 plus daily punitive charges of 25,000. Then count five, still at Farafane Station, failure to repair and raise fallen perimeter fence resulting in unhygienic condition at the water treatment center due to animal intrusion. That one also 500,000 plus 25,000 daily punitive. In Bansang, count one, inadequate chlorination of the municipal water, danger of waterborne diseases. So in Bansang, uh, that means what they were doing is they were not, you know, putting adequate chlorine. You know, chlorine, like I said, is that uh, chemical that treats water so that we are able to drink it without problems. Okay, so, so tap water, water, or river water, the difference between them is the treatment, and you treat it using chlorine. So in Bansan, they were not putting that. As such, there was danger of waterborne diseases. There are lots of waterborne diseases, diarrhea, dysentery, just name them, cholera. They are terrible, waterborne diseases. Then 500,000 plus 25,000 daily punitive, whatever you call it. Uh, count two, environment damage, and so environmental damage and supply of water that do not meet pure standards. Okay, because of all this, they were damaging the environment and they were supplying water that does not meet pure standards. Okay, in Soma, listen, so my own people are drinking this water. This is too bad. And unfortunately, they are not doing this to the new Incas. I don't know why. This is not fair. I'm going to I'm going to personally challenge Nawek. 
on this. So in summer, inadequate chlorination, okay, very similar to Bansa, of municipal water and danger of water born. Okay, so the fines total to 3 million and then the daily punitive charges, when they calculate the rate plus the days, I think it, um, it amounted to 500,000 as of that day. And uh, the whole bill was 300, sorry, 3.5 million. Can you imagine this? Can you imagine this class? So do we need to take care of our environment, either at personal level or organizational level? Certainly, certainly. You know, for the of NAVEC, there has been, there have been in this order for a very long time. NAVEC, NAVEC can respect the community, you know? So for them, they think, okay, whatever they do is right. Look, even within the combos, you go around, you meet both pipe, you know, yeah. water moving everywhere, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. something that I think they need to deal with, you know? Yeah. And that will serve as a warning to the rest of the institution. Yeah. I, I should yeah. be on this, on this matter. Yes, the problem, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think any genuine Gambia should, should, um, should um, you know, sympathize with them, no. But they, they need to pay. In fact, they need to pay more than this. Because, yes, Maria. Johnson, right now, as I speak to you, mm -hmm. water is coming everywhere. If you call them, they will never even come. And yes, they will not. To go and tie use. You cannot understand even the type of things that they used to tie with that, uh, this thing, the pipe. And that is yeah. not important at all. Because you don't yeah. know what to you know. You just don't get it. You call now, they will never respond. Yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. That's true. Now, like, now like it's just, they're just, they're just terrible. So I, I think this is, this, this came, um, it, it, you know, it came at the right time, to be honest. It came at the right time. You know, it's really, really, really important. I, but I don't know. Gambia, Gambia is ma Maslaha. I hope they will not uh, do this Maslaha thing uh, until they are able to, you know, uh, Clear this. I, 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 I think they should, in fact, pay more than this, to be honest. Because, um, you know, uh, it's, just, it's just terrible. What NAVEC has been doing, you know, um, nobody's happy with that. No, nobody's happy with that. You know, when you go out in some places, the, the, the pipes just, they just lie bare on the streets. You know, I mean, people could get serious problems with those because. If there is a little, I mean, uh, you know, little hole in those pipes, you know, that can go in and the people will be drinking those dirty water. You know, it, it, it can cause a lot of problems. And they don't, they don't seem to care. And just like uh, you, you said, um, if, there is a, if there is a boss pipe, if they come, they'll try to do, I mean, uh, this massage work, try to, you know, tie this tie there. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's terrible, you know. So it's our responsibility, it's our country, you know. But the only problem is um, because NAVEC doesn't have any competitor, so they just behave any way they behave. When you go to other countries, they have competitors. Um, no single uh, individual company will be responsible for, 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 for I mean, uh, uh, utility services. They will have sources to a lot of different companies so that there will be competition, there will be quality. But because they are the only ones who are doing the job, so they think they are the best. You know, there's no quality. It's, it's just unfortunate. Yeah. So, but I think this is, this is an eye opener, to be honest. Um, so, we, you know, we, we, we have some discussions. What will the reaction of NAWEC management be? I think the solution for this is, is, is just, is just to have like private company to provide. Maybe that will help us in, in NAWEC. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. If we have private companies, um, uh, uh, how to call it, uh, that will take care of it, you know, it's, I think it's going to be a lot better. That's true. So, and uh, again, is it going to be only this 3.5 million that they will incur as their environmental cost? Will it be only this, only the fines? Mind you, you have various categories of environmental costs. This is only the fine, okay? But what about remedying the situation? Like the, 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 the internal failure cost and the external failure cost. 
because they'll have to, you know, the reason why Pira is fine is yeah. so they can fix it. So if they fix it, if they fix it, you know, like a situation whereby the sewage went, you know, all over the place. So that would be an external failure cost. Yes, yes. someone wants to say. Yes? Yes, I said too. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, yes, the 3.5 million will not be the only cost they are going to incur, but they will incur all the costs. Because... Yes, now, I was saying the cost incur will not only be the fine. Exactly. I mean, the cost they are going to incur will not only be the fine. Yeah, no, it will not only be the fine. That's right. That's Hello? Right. Yes, yes, I'm getting you. We are getting you. We are getting you, Isaac. We are getting you, yes. So you are right. It's the, the only cost that will be incurred will not be the fines, no. But then the fixing cost, you know, and then, of course, um, if they want, uh, if they want this to... Uh, if they want this not to occur again, they'll have to take some environmental preventive costs as well, isn't it? So this will not be the only cost. Okay. So let's look out for the financial statements next year. We need to see this, this being disclosed. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. These fines. When Pura take money from Nawek, where are uh -huh. they going to put the money? Are they going to give back to the communities that are affected or they are going to keep it in the government government's pocket? Because for me, if you take money from one government institution and put it in another, it's like you are paying yourself. So I just hope that the communities that are affected, they get to benefit from these fines. Yes, yes. You are making a solid point, Danzo. You are making a solid point because uh, just like you rightly say, uh, Pura is um, partly government owned, just like Nawek is partly government owned. So if uh, Nawek pays money to Pura, it's like uh, coming uh, 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 Nawek giving what well, one government institution giving money back to another government institution. But the the problem is. Um, this will send a signal. At, uh, at least everybody will know that uh, what NAWEC is doing is not correct. That's one. Two, uh, it's going to affect the profitability of NAWEC because they will, they will incur uh, a revenue expenditure, you know, as a result of all this. Okay? So WIC is going to bring their, their, their surpluses or their profits down. As such, their performance will be down. So if their bonuses are dependent, uh, uh, the, the payment of um, bonuses to the staff, if they are dependent on uh, those profitability targets, then that means uh, that particular year, they won't, they won't get their bonuses. So it has effects on them. Okay, those, so that's one part. The other part you are saying is also very, very important. That is, um, if um, now it pays to Pura, uh, part of it should go to the community that were affected as a result of Nawek's action. That makes a lot of sense. Um, but I, I don't, I don't know whether they will do that or not. I, I don't know whether they will do that. But um, let's let's see what's going to happen because um, I'm sure Navek is going to challenge them. Go to the court. But uh, to me, what is important is uh, Pira must set the uh, uh, the, the states. Uh, they must set the record straight. You know, because uh, even Pira themselves, a lot of people are you know criticizing them for not doing what they are supposed to do, you know. But what is important is, it's our country, so we need to discuss about it. What we want is quality. You know, who knows? Any one of you could be directors of NAWEC or directors of Pura or anybody. We're all Ghanaian, so we can, we can handle any, 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 of those, uh, any of those roles in the future, okay? So to me, like I said, what is important is um, to make sure that justice is done, okay? So, but, but that's why your point, your point is really, really relevant. Okay, maybe we should form a delegation and say, okay, we are class of um, MA3. 
uh, we're trying to, you know, look at our environment. And it came at a time when all these fines are, you know, you know, we could form a delegation and then go and meet Pura and tell them, okay, we welcome this idea. We were very happy because at the time we were treating environmental management accounting, that's when this fine came, you know, and we are so happy because we have a very, very, very good case in hand, which we used in our class. So, but we don't want you to stop there. We want to make sure that you give back. Once now it's paid, we give back to that society that we're affected. I think we can form that delegation, isn't it? Eh? Who is going to lead us? <laughs> Rosa, are you going to lead us? Mr. Fufana, I will lead the delegation. No. You will lead it, I said. Okay. So, Rosa? Yes. Rosa, you know, you Roger, so any movement he make, you know, he, he's like skyline himself. So Roger will be running behind, behind the troop. <laughs> that is it. That is, well, it's our country. It's our country. Whatever we do, we try to, you know, ensure that, you know, um, justice, you know, uh, prevails and uh, our environment is not, you know, uh, 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 circumvented by anyone, you know, in any way. So, so, so that's it. Okay. Okay. So, additional costs. Um, uh, the categories we've said it's uh, those additional costs. Some will fall on the uh, um, prevention costs. Some will be uh, external failure costs and so on. Okay. So, um, let's all see what's going to happen because I'm sure it's going to be in the media. Uh, we'll see how it's going to end. Because um, I think at the end of the story, they were saying that when they contacted uh, Nawek, you know, the guy did not want to comment on it and stuff like that. But I will monitor it anyway. I will let you know uh, how it's going to end, you know. But um, there should not be any mass law. Uh, sorry, okay. Mr. Kovana. Yes. Yes, please go back, go back. The last statement, can you explain that, please? Sorry. <clears throat> oh, this one? Yeah, this one, not, yeah. The cost relating to, uh, to, to the fixing of the environment problem should be borne as well. Born as well. So, because yeah. I, was saying, uh, I was saying, what additional costs are possible? So I was just trying to remind you to note that the cost relating to the fixing of the environment, environmental problem should also be borne by them. You know, we've discussed them. Some of those costs will be, um, for example, ensuring that um, the areas that have been flooded they, 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 they clear those areas uh, where the, uh, they are not doing the chlorination properly, where the broken fences, they need to take care of all those things. And then they need to put in measures, you know, to ensure that those things don't happen. Maybe by acquiring better machines, you know, those will be uh, environmental preventable costs. So actually we discussed them, but it's just, just a note on, on especially the, the point three above. Is that clear, Amar? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Okay. Shall we move? Shall we? Okay. So uh, let's look at reasons for managing environmental costs. Okay. Reasons for managing environmental costs. Why should we manage environmental costs? Uh, first, of course, uh, a whole society as a whole is becoming more environmentally aware. Okay? Uh, before, people don't care. And this is why, deliberately, I try to blow this environmental management accounting class, not just to make it a number crunching class, but also for you the future generation, the future leaders of this country to be aware that our environment is our business. Our environment is everybody's business. If we take care of it, we are doing the good for all of us. If we don't take care of it, our great grandchildren will not be happy with us. Okay? Because before they come, our environment will have gone. Long a typical example is when we were young, in our days, in the village, 
even the bushes that are very close to, our, to, to, to the villages, the ones that are very close, you can't go into them during the during daylight. But now go there. There are no bushes. They are all gone. All these trees are gone, especially in the North Bank area. South Bank is at least better. They've cut all the trees. All the animals run away. So if it continues uh, uh, in that trend, you think your grandchildren are going to see anything? They won't see anything. What they will see will be desert. Now they will laugh. So why do we manage environmental costs? The reasons, of course, one of them is people are trying to be aware of the effects of environment. People care about their carbon footprint. You know, we, we, we spoke about carbon footprint the other day. So that's the, the measure of your total greenhouse gas emission that can be caused by you directly or your organization or a product. Okay? So the second reason is... Yes. Hello, yes, go ahead. Uh, I think this environmental problem, government, yeah, government now also have to do something, especially the cutting of the trees. Yes. Uh, last time I was in that, you know, they say uh, all the lands belong to the government. Yes. Um, I think the, before leaving the, the land with the community, giving it to these uh, real estate agencies, cutting the trees, making it uh, estate, like the example, uh, from uh, between Bekama and Kazakunda. That was okay. a big push there. A lot of trees. Okay. But today, if you go there, all those trees have been falling down. Exactly. From Bekama to Kazakunda, it's all real estate. I exactly. think it's high time government to use those, uh, the, those areas and protect the areas as forests. Exactly. Exactly. You are right. You are spot on. You are spot on. In fact, in yeah. fact, it has to do with government more than anybody else because government have got the ultimate power to do anything it wants to do. You are right. So that's why it's our responsibility, all of us, because the government is nobody but us. We are, we are the government, the people. Yeah. The people are the government. So yeah. let's pass the word round. Let's and make sure the that... Second, um, the, second thing, the second thing also, yeah. And the second thing also, any year, they are not also doing much to protect our environment. Yeah, that's true. Like that's if you go true. to Brikama, the, our fish market. Yeah. Those who have gone to the fish market in Brikama, they will, they will be a witness with Yeah, them. yeah, that's true, the that's true. The with this dirty water. The vessels are sitting inside that, that water. But yeah. I, never, I, I have never had any complaint about that. Yeah, the NEA, well, I, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> uh, they, they, they are also not doing much, to be honest. Because look at the case with the plastic bags. Now the, pla the plastic bags are more rampant now than before. You see? So, so that's the trouble. Anyway, um, there are a lot of things that are going wrong. Um, so, but we are young. Let's, let's, do our, let's do our quarter, please. Let's, let's not say that um, uh, whatever I say, whatever I contribute will not, um, will not uh, make a lot of impact. You know, whatever you do, as little as it may be, will, will, can, can make a lot of impact. So let us do our bits. Okay? So, like I said, secondly, environmental costs are becoming huge for some companies. So because of that, people manage, try to manage environmental costs. A typical example is with Namek now. So when Nawek pays all these fines, you think they are going to they are going to take uh, 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 environmental issues lightly? Nawek, put your mic off. Put your mic. Lamin, Lamin Jawara, can you mute your mic, please? I'm trying to put it down. Okay, excellent. Okay. So, uh, like I said, Nawek now, after paying all these fines, let's hope they do. Are they going to take environmental issues lightly? Are they going to take it lightly? No, Mr. They won't. They won't. They won't certainly take it lightly. Well, assuming that they are wise. Okay, so 
The third thing is regulation. Regulation is increasing worldwide, okay? Um, and of course, penalties are charged for non-compliance, okay? A typical example is with, uh, with a company called uh, John Craxford Plant Hire in the UK, you know? They had to pay, they had to pay 85,000 fines, okay? Um, as a result of uh, not doing well with the environment, okay? 3.5 million for now, okay? So, um, regulations are becoming very stiff. So, if you don't obey the regulations, you pay dearly, as simple as that. Mr. Pavana? Yeah. Um, I think B BP oil company was also once involved um, in environmental, I think their oil was, uh, uh, oh, something happened, yeah. I cannot remember exactly, but this was in 2010. So I'm not too sure yeah. whether there were any consequences um, to um, their failure in um, meeting the uh, environmental regulations. And again, um, yeah. I'm not too sure whether also um, this affected uh, their customer base. Uh, yeah, I think I think I'm aware of what you are what you are saying. I think there was oil spillage in in uh, in one of the countries. Exactly. Um, yes, I, I I remember this. I remember I remember this by Yes, it affected them a great deal. It affected them a great deal because they were heavily fined. They were heavily fined by the authorities. And of course, because of that, they, they, they lost some customers who they are competitors. You know, like I said, it's only us who are not um, that much environmentally aware. But in the West, if, you, if your behaviors, you know, towards the environment is bad, you pay dearly for it. Not only the fines, but people boycott your, your, your products. So the low sales, just like the, it was being mentioned in, in the video. Okay, so BP definitely paid dearly for, for, for that um, oil spillage. I remember that very well in 2010. Okay. So um, now let's move. So let's, uh, types of environmental cost. We've uh, looked at categories of environmental cost. We're going to look at uh, some of the types so that uh, we'll be able to um, see how best we can control them. So the first uh, uh, category, the first types, set of types are the conventional costs, okay? Um, raw material and energy costs having environmental relevance. For example, material waste, electricity cost, and fuel cost, okay? So these are all types of um, uh, conventional environmental costs. Okay? We have some that fall under the category potential hidden costs, okay? These are costs captured by accounting systems but then losing their identity in general overheads. You know, general overheads kinds of um, hides them, okay? And these are typical example of depreciation on production machines, okay? They are, of course, um, um, depreciation cost of machines that are used uh, in production. Of course, those machines will contribute to environmental degradation as a result of their uh, use it, but then the depreciation is kind of hidden. It's part of a cost, but it's hidden in uh, general overheads. So that's why it's part of um, a class called potential hidden cost. The third category is contingent costs. Okay, contingent. You know, we know we know about contingency, uh, a situation whereby um, there is litigation going on. Maybe um, there is an issue. We we don't know what's going to happen in the future. In the future, it might end bad, it might end good for the, for the, for the organization. So there are costs to be incurred at a future date. Um, like a typical example is um, if Pura, if Nawek refuses to pay and Pura decides to uh, take them to court. So they have to incur contingent liabilities. Okay? So um, a typical example will be cleanup cost um, in a situation whereby uh, in, in the NAWIC situation, it will be, of course, the fixing of the fences, as they are saying, um, the fixing of the, 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 the sewage, the flooding in around those uh, 
uh, areas in Farafeni and, 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 and other places. And of course, um, the, some legal fees also. If, they, if uh, Pira decides to take them to court, uh, Pira is going to ask that they pay all the legal fees that um, they incur. Okay. So another very, very important cost relating to environment is relation or image cost. Okay. Uh, these are costs by their nature are intangible. For example, the cost of preparing environmental reports. Okay. So if you um, uh, how to call it, engage an institution or a consultant's firm, a consultant firm to you know come up with an environmental you know report, uh, any cost relating to it will fall under this category. Okay? So now we can go ahead with the identification. How do we identify environmental costs? It's a bit difficult uh, because if they are not captured at the time when they are incurred, once they go into the general ledger, it becomes difficult. Okay, so um, what we can do is we have to have a close review of the general ledger. Okay, um, on the general ledger, if there are any costs relating to materials, utilities, you know, and the waste, then we'll try to find, we'll try to find in details, uh, we try to break those costs and then try to find weak ones will relate to um, environment and the ones that uh, don't relate to environment. So identifying environmental costs can be a bit um, complicated, okay? So, but um, there are some that are completely visible, like the situation with Navek, Everybody knows this, it was in the media, so uh, identification does not become difficult, okay? Uh, so the main problem, however, will be most of the costs will have to be found within a category of general overheads, just like we've said, okay? So um, what is important is to make reference to uh, the general ledger, of course, to the records, then you'll be able to uh, identify uh, environmental related costs and then you disclose them accordingly. So you disclose them in the financial accounts and then you can of course prepare reports for management that will be the management accounting aspect of environmental cost reporting. Okay, so now we identify them. How do we control them? This is really important. How do we control them? Okay, how do we control them? So first we start, we're going to look at the, uh, the cost category one by one and then try to see how we can control them. How can we control waste, class? How can we control waste? Can we control waste? Hello. Yes, Mr. Fofan. How do we control waste, Fatu? Yeah, by recycling them. By recycling them. Very good. Yeah. Very good. That's a good one. Okay. But what will be the first, first method of trying to control waste? Mr. Fofan, I think sensitization, like you did last time. Okay, very good, very good. Sensitization, of course. That's right. That's right. You sensitize people. They know what waste is. They know how waste can affect them. Okay? Um, once you do that, you will avoid um, waste. And waste can be very, very expensive. As you can see, um, it can claim... Um, you know, useful land. It can uh, cause pollution, just like we have in, in Bakote. We have too much waste dumped in Bakote dump site, and it's causing lots of problems. Okay, so the second category is water. Okay, um, water is an environmental cost. Okay, um, and we pay for water twice. One, if we consume water in our houses, we pay NAWEC for the bills, isn't it? But if we use water and it goes into our septic tanks, don't we pay for them to be uh, removed, for them to be sucked away? 
So we pay for water twice. As such, we need to be careful how we use water. So when you go out to have bath, use as little water as possible. Don't use too much water. And you know, people are fond of this. Once they, they have a sour on top of them, they open it, they just, they just sleep in the sour. You know, they will just wash for an hour. They will just wash for sometimes more than 30 minutes, wasting water for no reason. But what they fail to understand is they are incurring cost unnecessarily. Because that water you are using unnecessarily, you are going to pay, your bill is going to increase. And then two, because you are, you are wasting a lot of water, that water is going to go to into a, is, is going to go into your septic tank, it's going to fill your septic tank, and then you have to pay this sewage company to come and suck it away. So you're paying twice. So wise use of water is very, very important. Energy. Yeah. Energy. How many of us, even now, right now, you go around to most of the houses, you will find light bulbs on inside the rooms. The light bulbs outside of the fences and you know inside the houses, there most of them will be on. You go on the street, uh, now the, 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 the lights um, you know, uh, will be on. These are little, little things. Little, little things. But then that can cost us money. And it's not only going to cost us money, but it's going to cost us our environment. Because if you leave lights on, the sun is already on, then you are adding more. So we are burning more greenhouse gases, which is going to affect us more. Patu, Patu please meet your mic. Patu, Patu Samba. Uh huh. You had some people to accompany you. <laughs> okay, so energy, please, please, let us switch our lights off. Okay, let us make sure that um, if we have broken pipes, let's fix them at the houses. You go to some people's house, water will be leaking throughout. They won't even care. Water will be leaking. Too many problems. You're going to pay more bill? Well, maybe some of you because you don't pay for water, so they don't care. But please, let's take note of these things. They are really, really important. Okay, so for travel, transport and travel, okay, um, how we can minimize or control environmental costs. You know, um, transport and travel costs, they are environmental costs because Vehicles, they burn um, petrol, they burn gas oil. If gas oil is burnt, it produces what? Carbon. Okay? So that's why in countries where there are too many cars, the place will be too humid, there will be too much emission of uh, greenhouse gases. That's why in some countries, uh, what they do is they allow people, they make it easy for people to join public transport. Okay, because public transport, if you join public transport, uh, it becomes uh, a lot easier. Okay, uh, there will be less vehicles because if each and everyone wants to come with their vehicle, it will become difficult. Okay, so um, transport and travel, try to minimize travel, uh, try to join public transports, public transport if you can. You know, I was explaining this uh, car sharing that we've been doing at Vodafone um, in those days. 